Hi guys, it's um, it's John back again with another model inbox review. Um, the aircraft we're looking at here, it might be a bit tricky for some people, but most of you hard-earned modellers would probably know that this is a Bell P39 Air Cobra. The variant of the Air Cobra is a P39Q, which was probably the most numerously built version of the Air Cobra um, of all. Interesting aircraft because the, prope uh, the propeller was driven by an extended drive shaft from the engine. As you can see, the um, engine exhaust pipes there are actually behind the pilot. The aircraft, the engine was mounted completely mid above the aircraft's main spar. And the propeller shaft also um, incorporated a 30... Uh, was it a 30 or a 25 millimeter? It was a it was a serious cannon in the in the propeller disc anyway. Um, firing through the spinner there in the middle, you can see the little protrusion coming out of the front of the red spinner there. But the aircraft was a very mediocre performer, and a lot of air forces disliked the Air Cobra during World War II. Um, but one of the air forces, the Red Air Force in in the Soviet Union, actually loved the aircraft. They thought it was a fantastic combat fighter. Um, and they they made terrific use of the Air Cobra throughout World War Two, um, and it was a very popular aircraft with Russian pilots. But Allied pilots generally did not really like this aircraft at all. Anyway, the uh, the inbox review we're doing on the 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 actual video is on is the uh, the Revell 144 scale mini series. Um, Bell P39Q Air Cobra. This kit was originally released in 1973 uh, by Ravel, um, and it came in as number 28 in their miniseries. Uh, they were an awful lot of 144 scale aircraft in their miniseries, and the Air Cobra was the 28th in those. Um, it's not a bad kit, as you'll see in a minute, but that was released in 1973 under this guy's interesting uh, box artwork there. And it was again re-released in a similar style of box artwork, but for the Japanese market um, in 1973 by Ravel of Japan. Um, exactly the same box, same artwork, everything identical, but there was Japanese uh, markings and Japanese writing all over the actual kit um, kit box. And yeah, that was released in exactly the same year. Then in 1973, they changed format with this type of... Um, yellow style boxing and this was very prolific throughout um, the western countries in America where Ravel released a lot of these miniseries boxes in this yellow style boxing and I can remember these boxes being on the shelves very prolifically um, when I was a child in my uh, pre I would say pre-teens I remember these were quite you know they were abundant in the shops in this style um, and that came in in 1973 as well. Again, it's still kit number 28 in the 144 scale series here. Um, but it was it was basically a mini series that had been reboxed and hashed up in this yellow format. Then in 1975, this the kit was reissued again in exactly the same style boxing. But I think um, I think the model actually had revised. Um, there was an instruction change and some of the information on the side of the box was changed as well but the actual major format of the box itself had was no different um, in any way shape or form but that was 1975 and this was um, also released under a company called Kikola um, who released this kit as well uh, through the Ravel guys and Kikola released it in, in their Market. I can't remember where Coca-Cola sells stuff. I think it might be um, somewhere like uh, maybe Mexico or South America, somewhere like that. But it was very it was very common for Ravel to hook up with companies like Ladella and Coca-Cola and Japan and Kiko and companies like that to release models in other parts of the world where they didn't really have a foothold. Anyway, that's 1975, it goes through to 1979, and again, here's Ladola that pops up again. Ladella, I think, was a Spanish company that sold models in Spanish-speaking countries all over the world. Um, but I'm, I'm pretty sure that they sold models um, in South America, and that is classed as Escala 144 miniseries, 
exactly the same kit it's still model number 28 it's the same artwork it's very very similar at all but the the style of the box has slightly changed as well and then in 2013 Revell released their Micro Wings series, and this is the actual boxing that I've got. Um, and they changed the the instruction format. It's the same plastic inside. The sprues are identical, but they did change the uh, the decal option on the kit, and the serial number is now 04935 instead of model 28. Um, so anyway, we'll leave you with a, a nice image now of an Air Cobra. Um, this is typical of an Air Cobra in wartime. Uh, very similar. You know, most of the aircraft were released in this sort of uh, livery with the uh, the BU number written in yellow on the on the tail fin there. Um, and to me, it's quite a striking looking aircraft. It's very it's unusual, but it's not unusual until you look deeper at the aircraft. I mean, the entry for the aircraft was a, was a side door here. Um, I think you had a side door on both sides. You had a ram. Air jet. I think that's the carburetor inlet, inlet which fed air into the engine. Um, you had that central spinner cannon in the middle of the uh, the spinner there that fired through the propeller disc, and you had other vents here which were oil coolers and um, radiator vents for the engine as well. And they were all in the wings. The aircraft was it was quite an, an, a radical design, if you like. So what we'll do now, we'll just uh, we'll just pan the camera down. All you guys remember my older videos, remember all the noise created by this. No noise now with this new this new stand, it's quite good. This is the kit itself, it's quite a small box, it's about the same size as my hand as you can see. Um, it's marked 144 scale here. You've got plastic model kit, model bass, bow sats, in, that's German, and the serial number is 04935. Um, not an awful lot of information on the side of the box, it's just reiterated bits and pieces here produced by uh, Revell and it's marked 2013 Revell GmbH there we go anyway, we'll open the box have a look see what we get inside and it's the other way up that's there we go. and there's not a huge amount of plastic in here I'm not expecting this video to take a huge amount of time um, you've got the usual piece of paper here which is safety instructions Every Revell kit will have one of these in it. It's basically um, telling modellers how to use glue, how to ventilate your room when using various, you know, accessories for modelling. It's it's just basically teaching your, your granny how to suck eggs, isn't it? Most modellers that I know don't even look at those anymore. And then you've got the instructions. We'll look at those in a minute. On the front page, the actual instructions is an A4 piece of paper near enough, it opens up into A4. And on the front page you've got an image, a reiteration of the image off the front of the box. And then you've got some uh, key symbols for the construction of the kit. Um, quite easy, printed in Germany, there's the address, email, um, website address on the front there. And then you've got general instructions prior to build and some safety tips there at the well not safety tips they're just general modeling tips and these modeling tips go back way back to the days in the in the early 60s when Revell, frog and um, even matchbox had a go at some of these where they were showing you how to do certain things in modeling uh, to get a better result and on the other side you've got paint call out at the top <clears throat> there are six colors here and they're all marked with um your various different paint uh, numbers for ID in. You've got the Humbrol colours there at the top, Revell colours, Tamiya colours, they're all there. Um, quite easy to follow. And then you've got a little parts plan here, which I'm always a big fan of. Um, as you can see, there's only really two sprues, which is interesting. And the canopy's loose in this kit, as you'll see in a minute. Not that many parts. And the flow of construction is very simple, as these kits always are. Um, you're basically, you're putting everything together in four, five stages. Sorry. Um, in the first stage, you're putting the fuselage halves together with the propeller. In the second section, you're putting the wings together, and then you're marrying everything up to, to produce the airframe in section three. 
Um, in section four, you're putting the armament and the undercarriage into place, as you can see there. Whoops. And in section five, it's the stand and the canopy. So there's, you know, the actual construction method is very simple, and I think this kit will go together very quickly. On the back, you've got the um, location ID guides and paint guides, you know, where to paint everything. And that's quite self-explanatory as well. You've got the paint colours here um, and the, the locations for all the decals. And then you've got the subject matter, which is P39Q, Model 10, Lieutenant Bud Anderson, 363rd, Fighter Squadron, 357th Fighter Group, circa 1943 so that's you know usual stuff that's what you get when you buy some of these kits um as i said i often say this you know when you get an early production kit you you get the the better sprue you know the sprue will be crisper but the decals are usually terrible but with the mini wings kits i'm going to be honest with you the the sprues aren't usually that bad there's not a huge amount of flash on this particular one, but the decals are superb. I mean, that's the decal sheet. You can see it's the register on the decals. I'll turn them up right so you can see. The register on the decals is superb. The backing is phenomenal. It's crystal clear. And if I bring that decal sheet up, you can read virtually every, every item of decal on there quite clearly. It's very, very easily recognisable. And the, the backing film and the decal, it's not that raised. And I've built a number of these kits before, and the decals do go on very, very nicely. What I'll do now, I'll show you the sprues very quickly. Um, nothing to write home about, I'll be honest with you. You've got a, a transparency sprue, which is basically the stand. I usually paint these black, although I do like to have the undercarriage down on some of these aircraft. I think they look quite nice sat on the un on the ground on their undercarriage. The canopy itself is quite nice. It's got a little tab here. I can show you this canopy. I'm hoping to be able to get this in focus quite nicely because it's actually quite a nice piece of work. Um, it's quite clear. It's framed quite nicely. I'm trying to get it to focus, but it's not I'm not really having it very easily, is it? But it's quite nicely framed and that will paint up really nice and it's quite a nice little piece of work even though it is tiny the plastic sprue not a lot going on here i'll be honest with you it's not an awful lot going on but basically it's one sprue of gray plastic but as you can see the actual surface detail on the parts is pretty good yeah it is race panel lines but you have to remember this is early 1970s technology um quite a thick gate there for the retainer for the propeller but the propeller is nicely molded the underside of the wing there is quite nicely defined the surface detail on it's pretty good there's not an awful lot in the way of wheel well surface detail and not there's nothing inside these fuselage halves at all it's just a matter of blackening them down before you assemble the fuselage halves and away you go and the undercarriage is pretty basic as well as you can see, but it is 144 scale, so you know, you're not, you shouldn't really expect a huge amount. And then you've got the fuselage halves as well, and they're, they're not too badly rendered either. Now, this is, they are basic, the tail planes there, they're all basic. But the parts on this, on this kit, I don't think they're terrible. They're not the best, you know, there are companies that produce 144 scale models that um, are certainly far better than this. But you've got to remember that you can usually buy these kits, even in the shops, for as little as three or four quid. They're really cheap to, to get a hold of. So what I'm going to do now is just put this, put this together so I can um, close this video down for you. Because there's not an awful lot to go through on a gun either. <laughs> I'll be honest with you. Not really. Let's just put this back in here. Oops. It's not letting me do that because there's a flap. There we go. There we go. There it goes. And then I can just put that back there. There. I'll show you there. I should be better to put it up right there. It's all right like that. There we go. And what I'll quickly do now is I'll quickly get the gump up so we can uh, close this video down. The actual inbox review is on the Ravel Bell P39Q Air Cobra. 
The kit's serial number is 04935, but its original release was number 28, and it's modelled in 144 scale, an original release date of two th uh, 1973. The, uh, the release of this particular Microwings kit is 2013. There are decals for one version, a P39Q Model 10 flown by Lieutenant Bud Anderson of the 363rd Fighter Squadron, 357th Fighter Group, United States Army Air Force, based in Italy in 1943. The dimensions of the kit are approximately 2.67 inches long by a 3 inch wingspan and it's about a 3 quarters of an inch high on its undercarriage. There are 15 parts on one grey plastic sprue and 3 parts on a transparent plastic sprue, totalling 18 parts in total, but only 2 parts are on the sprue, one is loose. The options and costs cover all scales up to 187th scale and there aren't an awful lot, but some of them are quite interesting. Um, in 1700th scale there's a company called Green Max who produce quite a serious diorama set which incorporates a Bell P39Q Air Cobra. Um, sorry, it's not a P39Q, it's a P39D. It's called the Iwo Jima Landing Set. Um, and it comprises a P-36 Hawk, a P-38 Lightning, a P-39D Air Cobra, P-40M Warhawk, a P-47N Thunderbolt, and a P-51D Mustang, and a P-61 Black Widow. It also has a barrage balloon, um, USS Callahan, a medium landing ship, Type 1 LCI, 2 times Type 3 LCIs, an LCVP, an LST Mark II, an LVT Mark IV, an M4 Sherman, a GMC CCKW truck, which is the old General Motors truck, um, a Willys Jeep and some figures. Now this set is actually quite rare and I have seen it sell on eBay and other media sites, but it ain't cheap. <laughs> the original Green Max offering usually sells for anything between £40 and £50, pound, but it is covered also in not in complete form, but in some form, uh, by Pitt Road, who built a US warplane set 2 comprising a P-36C, a P-38J, a P-39D, a P-40M, a P-47N, a P-51D and a P-61. These are all reboxed Green Max kits, but they only incorporate the aircraft from those, and as such, they're still dear. They retail for anything between £22 and £25. Pit Road also did a US warplane set to clear plastic version, which is a reboxed Green Max kit, and these retail for about £25 to £27. These would enable someone to paint the aircraft up but leave the transparencies clear. Pit Road also built a US warplane set 2A, and this set comprised of the kits in set 2 with the addition of an F7F and an F8M Grumman warplanes retailing at between £25 and £27. And they also produced a Green Max kit um, warplane set 2, which produces a P36C, a P38J, a P39D, a P40M, P47N, a P51D, and a Mosquito. These are reboxed Green Max kits, but they didn't include the P36 or the P39 Air Cobra. Um, Pit Road also produced an Iwo Jima landing set, which is the reboxed original Green Max kit, and that kit can be purchased for as little as £27. I know it still sounds a lot, but uh, you have to remember that this set is is really comprehensive and it, it comes with an awful lot for the diorama to, to work with. In 144 scale, original P39 Aero Cobras, there are four standalone kits and three reboxed. Uh, Bren Gun produce a P39D, a P39F, a P39K and a P39Q. These are all individual boxings and they retail for between £8 and £13. F Toys do a P39Q which retails for between £25 and £27. Osmods um, build a P39 but it could have resin parts incorporated in it for about £15 to £20. And also the Revell offering, of course, with the P39Q Air Cobra is about five to twelve pound. I have seen it go for as little as two or three quid, but in the shops it's usually about five ninety nine. Um, the Revell kit has been reboxed by Revell Japan, about five to ten quid. Revell Kikola, about five to ten quid, and Revell Lodella for about five to ten quid. 
conclusions. Well, it's cheap and pretty easy to acquire. This kit is reasonably accurate too and should build incredibly quickly. A couple of raised panel lines on the wings, but not much else in the way of detail apart from the nicely framed canopy, which should paint up pretty nicely. I would recommend this kit too for diorama-minded modellers and the novice or younger generation builders as the kits of this size don't take up much room and as stated before, they seem to be reasonably accurate. For the options, the Osmod kit looks like its canopy is poor fit and the Green Max Iwo Jima set looks fabulous, but they are quite dear. Most recommended P39 in this scale is the Bren Gun kit, which apparently the pro builders and professional reviewers think it's absolutely superb. Anyway, I hope this video has been of some use um, and thanks for joining in. I hope all your modelling projects are running really smooth and I'll catch you for the next one. Bye bye for now.